Your Majesties, Members, Lord Advocate, local heroes, all of our distinguished guests, welcome to the Scottish Parliament, Falchigu Parliamentna Halapa. Thank you all for joining us to mark our 25th <clears throat> anniversary as we reflect on what has been achieved and we look to the years ahead. It is my pleasure to welcome your majesties today. It's hard to believe that it was indeed 25 years ago that the late Queen declared the Parliament open. Your majesty, you were there that day and witnessed the excitement and aspirations of the people of Scotland in their reconvened Parliament. Your presence here today, as we mark this significant milestone, demonstrates your continuing commitment. We are grateful for the encouragement and counsel that we have received over these 25 years from the late Queen and from you. 25 years ago, this corner of the Canning Gate looked markedly different. Your Majesties, the view from your front windows has certainly changed, and I hope that you find your relatively newish neighbours agreeable. We're gathered today in our iconic building, which is now itself 20 years old, and over those years, Holyrood has become a focal point for Scottish public life and debate. A symbol of openness, accessibility and transparency in our democracy. The backdrop to significant moments in our national life. A place for engagement and protest. And I speak for all my colleagues when I say that being elected to this Parliament is a great honour that is never taken for granted. We are privileged to represent the people of Scotland as we take part in debates and discussions about how we do things and about how we can do them better for those who have voted for us and put their faith in us. The Parliament, the result of the democratic decision in 1997 of the people of Scotland, has become firmly embedded in our democracy and public life. And we're joined today by many young people from across Scotland who have grown up with the Parliament as part of their everyday lives. For them, this institution has been a constant. 
They may have visited with their schools. Since 1999, over 6,000 school groups have been warmly welcomed to Parliament. And they put their questions to their MSPs, experiencing democratic engagement firsthand. And I'm delighted that this event recognises the commitment, the ongoing commitment of our local heroes, people who make such a positive difference to their communities, the length and breadth of the country. Members have nominated you to honour the role that you play in meeting the needs of others. And I express our collective gratitude to you and the countless others who work alongside you. On this notable anniversary, I am honoured to welcome four of my predecessor presiding officers. And as one, we remember fondly our colleague, the late Sir Alex Ferguson. And while we have some common experience, we, we recognise that each of the six sessions of the Parliament has had a different character. It's brought its own particular debates, its own learning, its own challenges. And that is as it should be. Democracy and devolution will continue to develop as the experience, needs and aspirations of the people and the nation we serve change. And while the Parliament has, in 25 short years, become embedded in our democracy, we remain one of the youngest parliaments in the world. We look to and learn from others, and we continue to evolve the structures that shape our parliamentary week. And today, I am pleased to welcome speakers and representatives from some very old parliaments representing democratic institutions across the British Isles. We cherish engagements with other parliaments and an outward-looking exchange of ideas. Last year alone, we welcomed over 80 delegations from other parliaments around the world. So the needs of our constituents may change, and the way they engage with politics has certainly changed. Technology has changed how we work here in Holyrood. Social media enables more folk to be involved in Scotland's democratic process. But meeting face-to-face -face is crucial, though. And as a part of this anniversary year, I'm visiting all regions of Scotland with local members to reach people who may not be able to come here and to learn what they think of their parliament and what we can do better. This session of the Scottish Parliament is the most diverse and representative ever returned. That is welcome, but such progress cannot be taken for granted. It takes continuous effort and there is still much to do until we, there's still much for all of us to do until we can look across this chamber and see Scotland reflected back in all its diversity. We have much to reflect on and to celebrate. And as we move into the next quarter century and beyond, we will continue to grow as parliamentarians as well as politicians, to debate in good faith and where we might disagree wholeheartedly to do so with respect for one another, to optimise scrutiny to best enable Parliament to hold government to account. To strive to best represent all who call Scotland home. This is our common purpose. Thank you. Your Majesty, I now invite you to address the Scottish Parliament. Presiding Officer, First Minister, Members of the Scottish Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, the Queen and I are so very pleased to be able to join you today in marking the 25th anniversary of the Scottish Parliament. This Parliament opened on the first day of July 1999, on the cusp of a new millennium. It marked a new dawn for Scotland, one filled with anticipation, optimism and hope. Alongside the late Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, I listened in the Palace of Holyrood House that day with great interest as the then First Minister spoke of a new voice of new dreams, of a new and renewed Scotland. It was an extraordinary occasion for all manner of reasons. 
not least the fact that it came almost 300 years after the Act of Union of the Westminster and Scottish Parliaments on the 1st of May 1707. It was a landmark in a long, rich and complex story which we have shared over many centuries. For those present on that day 25 years ago, the new parliament was a great and perhaps even a somewhat daunting prospect. The hopes of the thousands that lined the streets of Edinburgh and the great responsibility that accompanied them rested upon the shoulders of each newly elected member, 13 of whom still give such dedicated service today. From that day until this, through its work over a quarter of a century, this place has not just thrived, but in doing so, has borne witness to the enduring relationship between the Parliament, the Crown, and the people of Scotland. The mace which is placed before us was a gift from my late mother on that day 25 years ago. On it are engraved the qualities to which we all aspire and that represent the very foundations of the relationship we share. Wisdom, justice, compassion, integrity. In those intervening years, much has changed in our world, but those most Scottish of values have remained steadfast. We are often told that we live uh, in an era of polarization and division. If that is so, then it is perhaps even more important, not less, that in the vital areas of representation, of political debate, of policy making, and of discourse, these values, together with hope, civility, and generosity of spirit, are never far from the heart of even the most difficult of issues. It seems to me that such an approach is why this Parliament has grown in its experience, in its ability to touch and to improve the lives of so many individuals and communities throughout this great land. These values and this approach have been championed consistently by the six presiding officers who have served their country faithfully and diligently. We are all, at the end of each day, united by our love of Scotland, because of its natural beauty, of course, but also because of its strength of character, based as it is on the extraordinary diversity of its peoples, whose range of ideas, skills, energy, passions, and frequently deeply held beliefs never cease to inspire me. From the central belt to the North Highlands, across the islands, in Ayrshire, in the borders, the cities, towns, and villages, or the coastal communities. Who, I wonder, could not fail to be moved by this complex Caledonian kaleidoscope? Speaking from a personal perspective, Scotland has always had a uniquely special place in the hearts of my family and myself. My beloved grandmother was proudly Scottish. My late mother especially treasured the time spent at Balmoral. And it was there, in the most beloved of places, where she chose to spend her final days. Back in July 1999, we heard Ian Crichton Smith's poem, The Beginning of a New Song, let it be true to itself and to its origins, inventive, original, philosophical. Its institutions mirror its beauty. Then, without shame, we can esteem ourselves. That day was a turning point 
Today is an important milestone. As we look ahead to the next quarter of a century and beyond, there remains much more to be done for Scotland, for the United Kingdom, and equally in addressing the challenges we all share as inhabitants of a planet whose climate is changing dangerously and whose biodiversity is being seriously depleted. Let this moment, therefore, be the beginning of the next chapter. The achievement of the past and the commitment shown in the present give us the soundest basis for confidence in the future. Presiding Officer, First Minister, members of the Scottish Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, I can only offer my most heartfelt appreciation of the public service you embody, together with every possible good wish on this special occasion and for the years to come.
Your Majesty's Presiding Officer. In due hashin e kohar acha, fihut se kawig bliana, faraval parlamash na halaba, ar pishach e horst, ar baha ganu. Today, we mark 25 years in which the Scottish Parliament has changed lives for the better. On our first sitting day in May 1999, the late Winnie Ewing placed the first words on the parliamentary record when she spoke of her aspirations for this Parliament. My hope, she said, is that everyone who was born in Scotland and everyone who chose Scotland as their country will live in harmony together, enjoying our cultures but remaining loyal to their own. Over a quarter of a century, this Parliament, members of all political backgrounds, have lived up to that clarion call. Together, we have stood for inclusion and cohesion. Together, we have stood against racism and bigotry. Together, we have welcomed migrants and those seeking asylum. And together, we have provided homes for Ukrainians fleeing Russian aggression. On these and many other fundamental topics, this Parliament has been the voice of Scotland. The Scots Crown sits before us, a symbol of over 800 years of our nationhood, a symbol of the distinctive identity of Scotland. Almost immediately after its establishment, in one of the many twists and turns in the long voyage of our nation, this Parliament became the gathering place for the people of Scotland. On days of joy, like today, when we celebrate the positive impact of this new voice in our land. On days of sorrow, when we gave thanks for the lifetime of service of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth. On days of anguish, when people come to protest, sometimes rather uncomfortably for me, when they're protesting about the government. On days of aspiration, when people come to encourage or perhaps even cajole Parliament into action. In such a short space of time, in the rich voyage of Scotland as a vessel of enlightenment, invention and creativity, this Parliament has placed itself at the very heart of the nation, legislating to address centuries of aspiration on land reform, ensuring dignity for the people by providing free personal care, tackling the country's unhealthy relationship with alcohol through minimum unit pricing, utilising new powers over tax and welfare to create a fairer society, making sure that love could truly prevail through equal marriage, enabling children to have the best start in life through early learning and the protection of their rights, all made possible by the service of members of parliament working at the very heart of Scotland. When this parliamentary building was opened in 2004, one of Scotland's foremost modern authors, James Robertson, gave us these words from his vantage point as the writer in residence of the Scottish Parliament. For in the end, a parliament is not a building, but a voyage of intent, a journey to whatever we might be. This is our new departure. This is what we opted for, solid and permanent, yet tenuous with possibility. These words have been framed in my parliamentary office ever since, reminding me, whether I was a backbencher or now the First Minister, of the unending possibilities of Scottish self-government. For 25 years, Scotland has grown in confidence as she has raised up this new institution at her very heart. This parliament has been steadfast in its compassion for the most vulnerable in our society and full of aspiration for the advancement of all. In the next quarter century, it is my hope that Scotland's democratic institutions continue to evolve and to break new ground. As we embark on the next chapter of Scottish self-government, on our voyage of intent, I hope that Scotland will continue to shine as a beacon of enlightenment across stormy seas, a refuge for reason in the world, a wellspring of modern thought and creativity. We give thanks for this solid and permanent parliament. We now look ahead to unleash the possibilities for Scotland.
Your Majesty's presiding officer, it is in the spirit of celebration and reflection that we mark the 25th anniversary of the Scottish Parliament. As a journalist and as a voter, I was an observer of its proceedings, and more recently, I've had the privilege of being a participant. To have a front row seat and a voice in the debates that shape the Scotland of today and tomorrow. I feel a deep sense of honour at being entrusted with this position. We all have the privilege of serving our communities and our country. Since the opening of the Scottish Parliament by the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, it has been the vessel for the hopes and aspirations of our country. Support for the principle of a devolved Scottish Parliament within the United Kingdom remains firm, and that is welcome. This Parliament possesses and has exercised significant powers impacting upon the lives of the people of Scotland. However, no matter its past achievements, it is the present and the future which must concern us as members of this Parliament. The debates within this chamber must reflect the concerns of those on the outside. Opening Parliament 25 years ago, Donald Dewar said, we will never lose sight of what brought us here, the striving to do the right thing by the people of Scotland, to respect their priorities, to better their lot. I agree with that sentiment, but too many still feel this chamber is detached from their everyday lives. So it is the task of every one of us elected to this parliament to address that. The 25th anniversary of the parliament is an opportunity for it to reset and realign with the public, to focus on fostering economic growth and increasing the opportunities which underpin shared and growing prosperity, to help families struggling with the cost of living, to deliver quality public services essential for the well-being of Scotland's people, and to ensure that everyone, no matter their background, can fulfil their potential and build a happy and rewarding life for themselves and their family. On behalf of my party, we will dedicate ourselves over the months and years ahead to achieving those ambitions, and we will work constructively with others to do so. Inscribed on the mace, which His Majesty's late mother presented to this Parliament, are the very first words of the Scotland Act 1998. There shall be a Scottish Parliament. For the past 25 years, there has been a Scottish Parliament. Today, there is a Scottish Parliament, and we will continue to serve the people of Scotland. We thank you, Your Majesty, for your presence today, for the support you have given to our Parliament over the past 25 years, and for what we know will be that continuing support in future. Thank you. Your Majesty's Presiding Officer, it's an honour for us all to be here today to celebrate 25 years of our nation's parliament. On behalf of, I'm sure, everyone, I extend our thanks to His Majesty the King for his presence and words here today. In 1999, he joined his beloved late mother at the opening of Scotland's parliament, where Her Majesty declared a new constitutional age. She gifted us the ceremonial mace before us today with its timeless reminders of wisdom, justice, compassion and integrity. And whatever our disagreements across this chamber, I firmly believe that every MSP elected to this parliament strives to reflect those aspirations. And we've heard today about some of the advancements this parliament has delivered, providing free bus travel for the over 60s and disabled people, free personal care, equal marriage, a ban on smoking in public places. But I suspect the father of this parliament, Donald Dewar, would have wanted us to go further. So while today is a time for reflection, it's also a time to look to the future. Because despite the change that devolution has delivered, challenges remain. Too many Scots are growing up in poverty. Too many Scots are losing loved ones to drugs and alcohol. Too many Scots cannot get the health care they need and deserve. So I hope today 
we can all recommit our resolve to deliver the true potential of devolution and the true potential of Scotland. Today, we're also paying tribute to the unsung heroes that have contributed so much to bettering our society. Like my nominee, Steph McFadden, who does incredible work running the Govan Help Pantry. But also like anti-poverty initiatives such as Systema Scotland, whose members will be performing for us shortly, I'm sure memorably and beautifully. And to recognise all those in service to others. Our NHS staff, emergency service workers, armed forces personnel, teachers, civil servants, cleansing workers, bus and train drivers, charity workers, and many, many more. We collectively say to all of them, thank you. And the words on that mace, wisdom, justice, compassion, and integrity, not only serve as a reminder to us in this chamber, they reflect the values that we see every day in people across Scotland. I firmly believe that Scotland's best days lie ahead of us. And as our late Queen said, Scotland is a society in which the qualities of cooperation, learning, entrepreneurial flair and national pride run deep. And as we look forward to the next 25 years of devolution, I am confident that we can build on what we have achieved and build on the talents of our people to deliver an even better nation together. Thank you.
Presiding Officer, friends, it took too long to begin this journey. Years, decades, generations for Scotland to achieve what it needed and demanded. A parliament of its own to address the profound democratic deficit. The first time I sat in the chamber, not this chamber, our temporary one while this place was still a building site, I was not an MSP. I was there as a youth worker, giving evidence as a committee witness back in Parliament's first year. And the experience I had was of an institution with its doors open, where we were welcomed in a spirit of participation and equality. Since then, this Parliament has grown in confidence, and it's shown the ability to create the change Scotland needs. Putting public health ahead of corporate interests with a smoking ban and a minimum price on alcohol. Achieving more progressive tax to begin building a more equal society. Sending homophobic legislation into the dustbin of history. And in setting climate targets, showing at least that political parties can agree on the destination we're aiming for, even if too many have so far blocked the action needed to get there. The journey is far from complete. This Parliament isn't yet strong enough to defend against efforts to undermine Scotland's right to decide for itself, even on devolved matters. The full promise and possibility of a Parliament for Scotland can still be realised. A society grounded in the principle of equality, in which our wealth is fairly shared instead of hoarded by the few in which all power is democratically accountable, and in which everyone in every community can live well within the environmental limits our world provides. We still have far to go. So I hope that the MSPs who sit here for the next 25 years and beyond have the courage and determination to continue the journey. Presiding Officer, Your Majesties, it is said that the majority of children currently at primary school will go on to do jobs that do not yet exist. That was certainly true for me, as I dare say it is true for the majority of members in this Parliament. I left primary school 10 years before this Parliament was reconvened by Her Majesty the Queen. It did not exist. And yet the arc of my career has brought me to this chamber. I love this place. I would never stop loving it. It can be a bear pit, full of rancour and acrimony, but we've shown it can also be a cathedral of ideas, of shared endeavour, where the needs and the interests of the people who sent us here are paramount and they are supreme. That together we can use the serious powers of this parliament to give everyone a chance in life, to lift people up with a secure, warm home, good schools, fast access to local health care, to protect our environment and the future of our planet, and to create a society where hard work is rewarded and where everyone can enjoy the promise of a comfortable retirement. This chamber can be transformative. So, Your Majesties, what are today's primary school children and the careers that they will go on to have? This parliament has now existed for 25 years. Some of those children will carry the fire in this chamber well into the next quarter century. Many will go on to achieve things that we cannot possibly imagine. It is incumbent on all of us to nurture their ambition, to open doors to them. And in everything we do here, we must think of them and the inheritance that we leave to them. On behalf of the Scottish Liberal Democrats, I would like to thank Your Majesties for your continuing support for the work of this parliament. Thank you. Call them war the heather 
grounds Call them war the barney rows My bonny dearie Hark the mavis evening sound Sound includin' the woods of mine Then a fall, then let us gang My bonny dearie We'll gang doon by Cluden side Through the hazel spreadin' wide O'er the waves that sweetly glide Take the moon say clearly Yonder Cluden silent towers Where at moon shines midnight hours O'er the dewy bending flowers Fairies dance say cheery Nor bogle thou shalt fear Thou art to love and heaven say dear Nought though ill may come thee near My bonny dearie Fair and lovely as thou art Thou hast down my very heart I can die but cannot part My bonny dearie We have come to the end of our ceremony marking our 25th anniversary. Thank you, Your Majesties, for sharing this significant milestone with us. Thank you to our fantastic musicians and performers, the Royal Conservatoire Brass Ensemble, Kosher Alapa, Sistema Scotland Big Noise, Callum McElroy, and our very own Parliament Piper, Stuart Macmillan, MSP. Thank you to the young people gathered here today. And who knows, perhaps in the future we will see some of you occupy these seats. And thank you to all our guests for being part of this special day. Thank you. Thank you.